the recently passed $18.8 billion Health and Human Services budget bill that spans the next two years included measures to improve the lives of Minnesotans with disabilities. Joining me to talk about some of those provisions is the chair of the Human Services Reform Committee, Senator Jim Abler. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, you said that this bill will enable people with disabilities to live more independently. What new measures or changes accomplish this? Well, yeah, and $18 billion is a lot of money. And so it's amazing for all the money we spend in this arena how certain areas have a hard time uh, being successful. One of those has been helping people with disabilities live independently. We've been working on this with Senator John Hoffman, myself, and others, and advocates to try to get people to have a real chance to be independent where they can be. And so if this bill were titled to be independence, we mean it. And so we've got informed choice, we've got housing options, we've got service options where people can try to be moving to be independent and we put some teeth into it. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of it actually. We increased a bunch of rates for the service providers so they can be available to have help at their apartment. We're trying to work on some shared services and it's really complicated but it's kind of simple like Aren't they people? Can't they just live? And so why is it them? And so they're just us. And so uh, that's what we, uh, I think we really accomplished. And I think that as we look back, this is going to be a turning point in independence. And you mentioned Senator John Hoffman. The two of you have been fighting for some time for pay increases for personal care attendants, um, PCAs, as you just said. And that effort has been achieved. Will the competitive wage help with the shortage of workers? I think so. And actually, the interesting thing, people think we just fight around. I hear the House and the Senate, Republicans, Democrats. We went into our conference time together with the House and the Senate. We both wanted to shore up the PCA program. We had different ways to do it. And as it could be, um, it came out better than both sides went in with. And so PCAs are going to get a wage increase, uh, maybe $15. Um, and, and then with a framework going forward, which means there'll be increases coming automatically. They can help people drive their, their client to the, buy socks, which was forbidden. They can maybe, they, we're working on a plan to help them go to the hospital with their client, which they can't do. Like, this stuff is common sense. And so, uh, in addition to those, we actually increase the rates for um, home health workers and seniors and assisted living. Try to find everybody have a chance to, uh, to be as independent as, have as many opportunities as they can have. This week uh, at the Capitol, home care workers and advocates rallied as part of President Biden's American Jobs Plan in the hopes of achieving a livable wage for home health care work. The idea is to unionize. I wonder what your view is of this. Well, and, you know, unions are a mixed bag. You have to pay money to be in one. The SEIU uh, unionized some of the PCAs, and that actually made a difference. And so what you want to make sure is how do you help a person go into home care or will it be a PCA as a career choice? You have to have decent pay, you have to have benefits, you have to have the hope that it's going to be a survivable career. Many, many people want to do those, that kind of work, but they simply can't afford it. So they go to some other job that they hate and they leave the job that they loved. And so if it helps, it's worth discussing. But just so you know, in this bill, we increased the base wage um, by like 5% and then built in a framework for more increases. So maybe in Minnesota, the job is already well underway. Several lawmakers spoke glowingly of the parent-to-parent -parent peer support groups. Uh, customized living quality improvement grants were also mentioned on the Senate floor. Um, th there are a number of grants and programs to enable some of these things that you're talking about. Um, how, how does some of this work? Who is served? Well, it, it was a really productive time, and I have to, you know, the, have to remind everybody that this, was, this bill was influenced heavily by a huge influx of federal cash. 8.6 billion went to Minnesota, 1.2 billion went to this bill. And that money went to the half that I represent, the human services side, mostly in human community, home and community based services and child care. And so we had a 680 something million dollars to put into the home and community based side and 530 some million into the child care side. So we were able to leverage all kinds of cool things and then some we chose to keep paying for out of the state's cash. Um, parent to parent, peer support. If you have a child with disability and you go through that and you've learned a lot, you have, now you have a young mother, young father who has no idea what they're doing. Wouldn't it help to have somebody tell you what's going to happen and how to navigate through? The customized supports, that's assisted living. And so we doubled the program from half a million to a million dollars a year to give 
assisted living places, small grants, $20,000, $30,000, to go do something innovative and to help keep people mobile and healthier. And it's amazing when you uh, create little grants like that, the innovation at the local level, what they can actually do on a, on a project that spends millions of dollars a year. But this 20000 is like a little extra juice to do something special. And the reports of those are remarkable. So we doubled it this year. Access to child care, you were just speaking of child care, had reached crisis levels even before the pandemic. Uh, since there are even more challenges, there are investments in child care in this bill, including raising the reimbursement rates and some efforts at stabilization. What else is going to help with this child care piece? Well, we have, uh, we being us, the feds, uh, dropped money, rained money on the state in child care with different kinds of grants through the time, public health grants, we call them, to keep people open. And so um, those are still in the bill. There's $304 million in this bill going out over two and a half years to assist uh, every child care place. We, still, though, we've lost half of our licensed homes over the last you know, five years or so, uh, which is a real problem. And so how do we try to support them? There's, there's money, th those grants maybe will help, but it seems like it's hard. Um, we also have some money. We did increase the rates for the CCAP, the Child Care Assistance Program for the people that are on assistance programs to get a little better rate, for, especially for infants and toddlers. We also have some money to help fix up your place, uh, some grants through DHS to help do some, some modest repairs to get a little better, you know, whatever, something for your kids. And so I hope that that's gonna make a difference. But at the end, um, it's really important, and it's a statewide challenge to have enough child care to facilitate the workforce. The legislature continues working on ways to improve access to affordable housing in Minnesota, but at this time, homelessness is still a problem. What supports are available to help people out of homelessness? Well, and I worked as a representative, Aisha Gomez, on this. Um, this is a big deal, Anoka. I mean, every, every place has challenges, and part of it is having enough funding to support who needs the supports. Um, the emergency services program was under a million dollars a year, now it's six. And so that was a true commitment to help at least the emergency side. But part of what we really have to get after is how did they get there? What mental health issue, what substance use, what disability? Uh, almost half of them have a disability of some kind. And back to what, how to be independent, how to be supported, just be cast off, to hang around. And so at some point you have to get to the source and try to stem it there. But we tried to at least deal with the symptom in this bill. And I think as we've been working on independence and supports of people with disabilities and substance use and mental health, all of which this bill is full of as well and not enough time even to talk about it, perhaps we can stem the tide and give everybody a chance to succeed and have a, in a kind of abundant life like we've been all hoped that everybody could have. One final question. As the state continues to emerge from the pandemic, uh, perhaps a labor shortage becomes even more significant due to demographic changes. What concerns do you have for Minnesota's more vulnerable residents? What's on the horizon? Well, there's labor issues everywhere. Even without the pandemic, there was labor concerns just because there's not enough human beings to serve the boomers and then the group after that. All the, some of that sometimes they do help and it makes it worse. Uh, the federal money, the $15 an hour, um, 600 bucks a week, to stay home when you only make $13 an hour, really put a plug in that. So I, I think part of the best thing that'll happen is when that money goes away and we can get back to people having to work. You know, work is healthy. Work gives people structure and it gives them some pride in their life. And hopefully we can find jobs that people are taking pride in that they can make a difference about. And in the home health field, the healthcare field in general, there's so much opportunity for pride and joy and helping somebody. And then sometimes as you help somebody else, you kind of feel better about you. And, and some of those issues you get to work through. And we all struggle. I mean, people think that just because we're dressed nice sitting here, that we have nothing on our mind. We struggle every day, at least I know I do, and not speaking for you. But, and so how do we help people sort their way through? That's the real purpose of the human services system. Take a person and challenge, move them through to uh, independence and maybe even prosperity. So, and, we agree on that in a bipartisan way. Senator Jim Abler, so good to see you in person. Thank you. Thanks again.